Number 38, letter A. In the deep space between galaxies, the density of atoms is as low as 10 to the 6 atoms per cubic meter, and the temperature is a frigid 2.7 Kelvin. What is the pressure? All right. So for letter A, does it sound to you like conditions are changing? Like they're telling you some initial state of conditions about, you know, the temperature started at 2.7 Kelvin and then it was increased to whatever, or the pressure's changing or the number of atoms are changing? No, right? It doesn't sound like anything's changing here. So when nothing is changing in a problem like this, we're probably simply just using the, the ideal gas law, all right? So if I were to um, detail that here, it would be PV equals NRT. All right. I have a general video. There'll be a link in the description below that details then um, all about the ideal gas law and the combined gas law that I want you guys to know uh, for your course. So please check out that video. OK, I'm not going to talk about too many of the details in these videos now. All the details will be in that video. All right. So basically now what we need to do is solve for the pressure. OK, so we got to solve this for P. So pressure will equal then NRT over V. And actually what I realize is I probably shouldn't use this variation of the formula. I should probably use the uh, Boltzmann variation. So forgive me. I'm just going to start this again. So we're going to have PV equals capital N times KT. This stands for the number of molecules or atoms, whatever we're talking about. And then K stands for the Boltzmann constant. Again, I got to solve for pressure, so I'm simply dividing out the volume. So it's capital N times Boltzmann constant times the temperature divided by then the volume. Now, what we realize here is that, and what's tricky about this number that's given, look at the units. It's atoms per cubic meter. In other words, it's N, capital N, per V, right? This is really N per V. So notice in my formula over here, I actually have N per V, right? If I were to just rearrange this ever so slightly, I could write something like this, N over V times KT, right? That's legal. Now what I can do is simply plug in the values, right? So I have my 10 to the 6, that's the number of atoms per volume, 10 to the 6, multiplied by the Boltzmann constant, all right? That's going to be 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd. It's like joule per Kelvin or whatever. And then multiplied by the temperature in Kelvins, and the temperature in Kelvin uh, will be, as they told us, 2.7. So literally, this is all we have to do, all right? So we have then the pressure will be equal to, let's take a look. So 10 raised to the 6th times 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 times then 2.7. So this comes out to a whopping 3.73 times 10 to the negative 17th, and that's in terms of Pascal, all right? Okay, that would be the pressure, all right? Really, 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 really tiny pressure. Now let's take a look at letter uh, B. So it says, what volume in cubic meters is occupied by one mole of gas? Okay, so this is like a, I don't think that this, what volume is one mole of gas? I. What volume? I guess it's under these conditions. Yeah, I guess it has to be under the conditions for letter A. It doesn't really say, right? It just says, what volume is occupied by one mole of gas? Well, under what conditions? Under this temperature, right? Is that what they're asking us? Or is it under STP or whatever? Actually, I, I honestly have no idea. It doesn't say. So I have to make an assumption. I'm going to assume that uh, they're talking about these conditions. All right, so I don't, I don't know what else it, it doesn't say STP. So, um, so let's write down again, we're going to be using our ideal gas law. Okay. Uh, it probably would be better now to use this particular gas law just because we're dealing with moles here, as they're telling us. So we have PV equals NRT. We're solving for volume, therefore divide out the pressure from both sides. And now all we need to do is know these variables in order to find the volume. So we do the, do we know the number of moles? Yeah, it said one, right? Do we know R? Sure, that's 8.31. Okay, if we're using then uh, cubic meters in Pascal, all right, both for volume and pressure respectively. The temperature then uh, is going to be the 2.7 Kelvin, and then divide this now by the pressure we just found of 3.73 times 10 to the negative 17th. 
And now the volume here will be 8.31 times 2.7 divided by 3.73 times 10 to the negative 17th. And here we have now the volume will be 6.015 or 6.02 times 10 raised to the 17th. All right, and that'll be in terms of cubic meters. So that's a pretty large space. All right. And if you had to, if for some reason you, you know, had to calculate this at STP, all that would change is that this number, the, the Kelvin value becomes 273. And then your pressure would have been 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. Plug that in, then you can solve for your volume and you'll see what that is under standard pressure and temperature. But it doesn't tell me to do that. It doesn't say it anywhere. So I don't think that is what they want. But, you know, your guess might be as good as mine on this one. So let us see. If this volume is a cube, what is the length of its side in kilometers? Okay, so basically they told us the, the volume is a cube, right? So you have to know that the volume of a cube is equal to the sides cubed, right? The length of the sides cubed. So now if I take this value, right, which is the volume of 6.02 times 10 to the 17th, and I want to find then the sides, all I would have to do is take the cube root of both sides, right? So when I do that, I just have s and then when I do it for the other side, let's see, let me throw this on into the calculator. And we have a value now of 8.44, 8.44 times, and let me move this over just ever so slightly, 8.44 times 10 raised to the, what do we have, 3, 4, 5. But that is in terms of meters, okay? That's in terms of meters. Uh, why is that in terms of meters? Because I used cubic meters in the formula. All right. Now they want it in kilometers. So basically all you got to do is convert this meter into kilometer. You just got to simply divide it by a thousand. Right. So that would or just subtract three from this exponent. However you want to think about it, you're going to get the same answer. So this is this then becomes 8.44 times 10 to the two kilometers. All right. In other words, it's 844 kilometers would be the size of then each side of, of the cube, which in the grand scheme of space is basically piddlins. Okay? So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and tell your friends. All right? We appreciate it so much. Thank you.